In this video we're going to tie a small stone fly nymph called the runt stone. I'm going to start off with a Daiichi 1550 nymph hook in a size 10, 12, or 14. This fly we tie really small, very similar to the rubber legs, same principle, just all scaled down. We're going to start with some Vivas 14 aught or 12 aught thread and some ginger colored life flex for this color. And I'm just going to take that life flex, I'm going to tie it in right up at the head of the fly. And I'm going to continue with that strand all the way down the shank of the hook, all the way to the bend. And we're just going to use that for the tail as well. And I'll spiral my thread forward and I'm going to do the same exact thing with another piece here on the other side. And what you should end up with is two antenna and two tails. And I like to tie it in so that they kind of the curve of the material naturally goes with the fly, kind of curves up or out away from the fly. Now we're ready to tie in our body material, which is just some olive brown velvet chenille in micro size. And I'm going to take a few turns of thread just down the shank, about an eye's length away from the eye of the hook. I'm going to capture that chenille and tie it along the side of the fly. Then I'll take my thread forward and right where I tied in that chenille, about an eye's length to two eyes length, you don't want to do less than an eye or more than two eyes. That's going to be the point where we tie in our legs. We're going to use the same material, the ginger colored life flex. This time, you can see I have the curve of the life flex. I'm going to tie it so that the curve faces inward on the body. So kind of the opposite of what you did with the antenna and the tail. This will kind of keep the legs from kind of splaying together. If I curved them in and tied them in, they both slay, they both splay and mash each other, each other together. So this way they kind of keep themselves apart. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here, making sure that they're on the side of the shank of the hook. And then I'll take just a few wraps to really secure them and also give my chenille a little landing pad to lay in. Then I'm going to take my thread and just jump it in front of the legs but behind the antenna. Then I'm going to take all the legs and the antenna together and do a single full turn wrap of thread. That'll just keep them out of the way. Now I'm going to take that micro chenille and just kind of roughly pull it tight for that first wrap and then loosen up and just do moderately tight wraps for the rest of the body. It only takes about three and a half wraps, at least on this size 14. Then I'm going to take a single wrap in between those legs, just one. Then I'm going to take a single wrap in front of those legs, no more than one. And then I can capture the chenille underneath the eye of the hook there. I take two nice tight wraps and another one right there on the eye. Then I can get in there and trim out that chenille nice and tight. Now for the tricky part, the whip finish, I'm just going to pull all the material out of the way and whip finish right underneath that eye. Now we can trim our antenna I like them to be about three quarters of the length of the shank of the hook, just less than the length of the shank of the hook. Then the legs, we're going to trim a little longer. I just push them all down and out of the way. Don't stretch them, you just kind of hold them with some loose tension. And we're going to trim those. I like those to be about one and a half times the length of the body. And what you end up with is just this perfect little tiny rubber-legged stonefly. This is a pattern I've played close to the chest now for a while, but 
Here it is being released to the world called the Runt Stone. <laughs>